Am I the asshole for not wanting to split my inheritance with my adopted siblings? My aunt sent me here for an unbiased opinion. I'm a 20F. I was 5 when my parents divorced. 8 when my father passed unexpectedly. 10 when my mama remarried a guy who was a single father of four kids, who she eventually adopted. I watched her play mother to these children while I got the short end of it. I was a troubled teen. I even got pregnant at 14 and was kicked out on the streets by my mother and stepfather. My aunt Italy and maternal grandfather were in my corner for everything. Especially my aunt. I consider her my mom and her kids my siblings. Everything I wished my mom had done for me, my aunt has and more. Her kids consider me their sibling and vice versa. She even had a college fund put to the side for me, which I'm on track of graduating from nursing school in the next year. She's never made me feel like me or my child are a burden. She's always treated me like I'm one of her children, nor is she afraid to make me fall in line when I'm in the wrong, lol. I honestly think the world of her, and I don't know where I would be without her. She was previously in the military but once learning I'd been put out, she left the military for good to help me raise my daughter. She also encouraged me to forgive my mother and try to build a relationship with her at my own pace, which I have done. It's not the greatest but it's better than what it used to be. I even spend the nights with her and her family sometimes. I lost my grandfather last year, mom and aunt Italy have the same mother but different fathers. I was left the majority of his estate, which will set me for life. My mother approached me and asked me, more like assumed, how much I planned to give my adopted siblings because my grandfather hadn't left them anything. I told her that I wasn't. That if anyone deserved anything it would be my aunt and my real siblings, though I know they would never accept anything from me. I told my mom that her kids weren't my siblings. I don't really have a relationship with them and they have their shady ways. She called me a selfish little, something that rhymes with punt. She and her family started harassing me which upset me. My aunt Italy found out and paid her a visit. I don't know what transpired, but the harassing texts and calls stopped. I asked my aunt was I in the wrong. She told me no. That it was my decision what I wanted to do with my money, but that I shouldn't F it off on people who wouldn't do the same for me. I can't help but feel that maybe I am cheating my adopted siblings out of an inheritance? Am I being selfish? Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. You were left that money instead of your mother because your grandfather saw you were a good person and he thought you deserved it. Had your mother not kicked her scared and pregnant teen out of the house and shown her true colors, she may have been in the inheritance. Now she's shown you her true colors again by harassing you. Cut contact. No one needs those kinds of people in their life. You found your family, after you left your bio mom's house. Not the asshole. You owe them nothing. If it were me, I would do something really awesome for the aunt. Up. Your grandfather decided what to do with his estate. He made the decision. He was the one who didn't like what his child, your mother, did to you so this is how he rectified how you were treated. Shame on your mother and stepfather for throwing you out at such a young age. They gave up on you and washed their hands of you, you know instead of actually being the adults and helping you figure all this out. Shame on them. Block your mother. Take a break from them. Get a new number hug your aunt and her family. Good luck. Not the asshole. Cheating out of an inheritance? If grandfather wanted them to have it, he would have left it to them, period. No more discussion needed. No. No I completely adore you aunt. If she and her kids won't accept any inheritance money from you, why not propose a nice family trip? Without you mom and her new family. Not the asshole. If your grandfather wanted them to have any of the money he would have left it to them. You would be doing him a disservice if you gave them anything. Am I the asshole for telling my former brother-in-law that my sister's money for their children has nothing to do with him? I lost my sister Mia to cancer 11 years ago. She left behind her son Kai who was 4 and her daughter Ella who was 3. My sister was married to Luke. But when she became ill, she had turned to me and the rest of the family for help with her kids' inheritance. She asked that we buy her out of her share of the business our grandparents left us many years ago, so she could leave her kids' money. We did just that and it allowed her to leave a sizable sum for both kids. It's enough to cover college for both and leave them with money for something else. Or they could buy a house each. My sister just wanted them to have something real, that could be there for them when she couldn't be. She ended up leaving me in charge of the accounts for the kids. Luke met his current wife two years after my sister died and married her within six months and added five more kids over the following three years. They have struggled over the years. 
One of his stepchildren has physical health issues, another has special needs and requires a lot of therapies. Money is often tight. We have been made aware of this by him over the years. He didn't know about the money until he actually read the letter my sister left for him which informed him of the existence of the money. Ever since he learned of it 18 months ago he has been determined to get his hands on it. He has accused me of letting my nephew and niece starve when I could have dipped into the account, which I can't and which I didn't, they never starved. He said I was dividing his family and so on. He told me that money needs to be split seven ways. That Mia was selfish to keep the money from his reach so he couldn't use it on all his kids. That it was selfish of her to come between his family after she died since he had been a loyal husband to her. One of his stepchildren ended up missing out on an opportunity due to a lack of money. He tried to get my niece and nephew to ask me for money for their step-sibling to do it, but the kids said in front of him that they wanted to keep the money in the account, which angered him. He told me I didn't have the right to do this, that his kids' money should be accessible by him, their father. I told him that the money my sister left for their children is nothing to do with him, that my sister made it so, and he needed to act like it doesn't exist since it doesn't for anyone but my nephew and niece. Let's just say he wasn't happy. Am I the asshole for what I said? Not the asshole. His children with another woman have no right to that money under any theory I can formulate. Not the asshole. I'm gobsmacked he thinks her inheritance should go to children that aren't hers. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Your sister was extremely smart to put you in charge of the money. She knew who to trust. I'm happy those kids have you looking out for them. Not the asshole but really, were you in doubt on that point? You said it yourself. There's a reason your sister wanted you to manage the trust instead of Luke, and it's because you're determined to make sure it goes toward giving them a good future. Not covering basic necessities he should have considered before taking on so many kids. Not the asshole. That money was intended as a trust for her kids, with you as trustee. You would violate your legal obligations as trustee, to use this money in a way other than how she set up. You might want to check with an attorney, or at the bank, and make sure the trust is set up properly, so he can't get to it. Also, be prepared he might try to challenge the trust, or your care of it, in court. This could be very bad, as money for such challenges comes out of the trust, for both parties. Line up your ducks, and don't back down. Of course not the asshole. This money do for her children, not his new children. I hope that money is well protected so he can't get his hands on it. Am I the asshole for telling a lady on the bus to shut up? Today I went out with some friends. There was 35 degrees Celsius, 95 degrees Fahrenheit, outside. I hate any temperature that goes above 30. I got on the bus and at the text next stop a lady sat down next to me. Even though there were plenty of other seats empty without anyone next to you. So that got me a little annoyed, but okay. After five minutes, she receives a phone call and doesn't bother to speak somewhat silently. Pretty sure everyone on the bus heard her. I was getting pretty pissed, but I put on my headphone. When she finishes the phone call, she tries to talk to me. I ignore her, but she keeps going, and eventually, she pokes me and at that point, I was mad. I take off my headphones, and say, Lady, you've been talking non-stop and I am pretty sick and tired of this so would you do me the favor of shutting the fuck up? She then tells me I am an uneducated asshole and gets off at the next station. So, Reddit, am I the asshole? Not the asshole. I'd have done the same thing. Not the asshole. I honestly can't abide by people who keep poking and prodding people wearing headphones. Like seriously, what life-threatening issue do you expect them to solve? Esh, everybody sucks here. So many different ways to handle a minor interaction like this. And don't blame the heat for your behavior. Not the asshole there's always a crazy person on the bus. In a city you don't bother a stranger unless it's life or death. If you blew up on her for talking that's one thing, but the poking is too far. She'd get her ass beat for that in some places. Not the asshole. Wow. Lots of the commenters here clearly have no idea of public transportation etiquette. The woman in this story broke three cardinal pubic transportation rules and was breathtakingly rude. 1. Respect people's physical space. You do not sit, or stand, right next to someone you don't know if there are open seats available. 2. Respect people's mental space. Loud conversations, particularly phone conversations, are extremely obnoxious, compounded by breaking rule number 1. 3. Respect people's boundaries. Headphones are a clear and well-known signal of, leave me alone. 
If someone is wearing headphones, don't engage with them, they do not owe you their time or attention. Escalating it with poking is getting into assault territory as far as I'm concerned. Not the asshole. Don't blame you. You've done something I've been wishing I had the gut to do many times before. Military medal. Am I the asshole for not opening the door for the cops when I was babysitting? I'm a college student making some extra money babysitting this summer. I was staying at this family's house in a different neighborhood I wasn't familiar with, with their four-year-old and six-year-old for an evening. I was getting them ready for bed and I heard shots. I told the kids that it must be fireworks. I just got them in bed on the side of the house that wasn't near the street and sat quietly in their room for a bit until they were alseep. I heard some knocking on the door and I didn't move even when the guy called out that it was the police and wanted to talk. Now to some of y'all, that might seem weird. Especially if you have police forces that are trustworthy. But I grew up in a country where the police were outwardly aggressive and dangerous to bring around. Calling the police on any kind of crime against a woman was a surefire way to get a second crime done that night. So I was taught early by my mom to never call police, just go to sleep. If they come around you didn't see or hear shit, you were sleeping. My family moved to America when I was 13 and learned that while the police in our area pretend like they're a more formal safe organization they're no different than the ones back home. Even worse because at least at home everyone knows they're corrupt and won't tell them anything or help them with anything. But here, some people believe the air of respectability they put on and aid them. It's a rougher area I'm living in and I can say for certain that I've never seen a cop protect or serve the community. So for me it was the most obvious thing ever that you don't come to the door if the cops knock. Like that's just generally accepted, in the places I've lived, as the stupidest shit you can do. I found out when the parents came home that that's not universal. They live in a rich neighborhood and I guess they actually do feel protected and safe with their police. But I didn't know that so when the mom came in and asked what was going on on the street, I said I don't know, I didn't see anything. She said I must have noticed all the sirens and lights and I said, yeah, I saw there were cops around, one knocked. I don't know what it's about, she asked me what he had to say and I said like it was the most obvious thing in the world. I don't know, I didn't come to the door. She got angry and asked why I wouldn't go see what was happening and talk to the officer. I was honestly incredulous, to me it was obvious. I didn't explain myself well since I was so incredulous and said, why would I? In a, what the hell are you thinking, kind of tone. She said I should leave and that she didn't want me watching her kids again. I had to argue with her to just get paid but she eventually did but tipped like shit. I'm curious about an outside opinion. Am I the asshole for not opening the door and not asking questions when I was babysitting and the police came around? Edit. Some of y'all seem to be missing some context. If you are asking yourself, wait why is talking to the police dangerous? And really don't know, I'd recommend this video by a lawyer explaining it well. And if you're planning on commenting something along the lines of, haha scared silly little girls scared of nothing like an idiot, or, scared little baby girls shouldn't be babysitting. I'm sure nothing I can say is going to convince you I'm not just a scared stupid girly. But maybe you'll understand if a big man with a big boy job like a lawyer explains it to you. So watch that video before you go telling me I'm dumb. But I grew up in a country where the police were outwardly aggressive and dangerous to bring around. So in other words, the United States. I'm a middle-aged white lady in an affluent area. Unless I called them personally, I'm not opening the door for the police either. Not the asshole. Not the asshole rich people have a convoluted view of the cops because the cops in their neighborhoods actually take care of the people and only harass outsiders. You were under no obligation to answer the door and didn't do anything wrong. NTA for not opening the door. You were scared. But totally you are the asshole because there were shots fired, police at door, and you didn't call the parents. Nah. Understandable why you didn't answer the door. Understandable why they don't want you babysitting anymore. Not the asshole. There was a risk there whether or not the person knocking on the door was actually a cop or not. Shooters, killers have been known to pretend to be law enforcement to gain entry before. It was a smart move not to open the door, and it's no loss on your part if the mother no longer wants you watching her kids.